Now to an unorthodox way to fight Chicago violence. It's a unique story you'll only see here on CBS 2. Our Jermont Terry takes us inside the maximum security unit at the Cook County Jail. People accused of committing crimes now trying to stop them. Chicago is a world class city. 1834 comes. But it's a city in crisis. Somebody on God. The entire world is looking at this catastrophe in Chicago. I wanted to take a moment to really formally introduce myself. I'm a national speaker and I've spoken and worked with police officers. I've spoken at schools. I've spoken in universities. I actually have even trained police officers. And I wanted to take a moment this evening to explain exactly what the program and what we do and what we did that day. And people have asked me a simple question. Many people have said, well, if you're trying to stop shooting in Chicago, why are you going in the jail? Those people are already locked up. Well, each one of those people who are locked up, many who are returning home, we have a unique opportunity to speak with them, as you saw on TV, talk with them and inspire them and give them an opportunity for redemption and have them take some control over their behavior. We went in and asked them not to shoot innocent women and children when they get out. And if we give messages at the Cook County Jail, which is one of the largest jails in the country, that the crime rate will go down. I have done that in Florida. In fact, I had a police chief, the mayor and city council members go into the Manatee County Jail with me and we spoke and we connected with those individuals and the crime rate did go down. And what means the most to me and what I'm most concerned about is the death of our little boys and girls. Some who won't make it to first grade this year because they're going to be shot and killed and they're innocent victims. What I'm saying to you is, this is a problem that is a human problem that involves all the city, people in the city, people downtown on the Magnificent Mile, people on the south side, the west side, the north side, it's our children. And as we know, by neglecting some of the citizens in some of the different places in the city, it is now converged on downtown Chicago. In fact, we even have people who are leaving the city of Chicago because the crime has become what it, we all know untenable at this time. In this city, we have, and I don't want to name names because we have a lot of infighting politically, what to do about the untenable violence, and they're arguing and fighting. We should all be able to agree that our children, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, even pregnant women sometimes are being shot and killed with a baby in their womb. That is of concern for everybody. And we need to concentrate on the deaths of these young children who are dying every day. In fact, in the last six months, we've had over 200 children shot in this city alone. And that is unacceptable. It's intolerable, or at least it should be. Her name is Paulette Peaks. She's a young girl. She died at eight years old. And you know why she died? Well, she wanted some candy. She asked her aunt to take her to the store. In an un all too familiar story, this young girl was shot and killed by a stray bullet that came through the corner store and ended her life, eight years old. I went to her funeral. I spoke to her at her funeral. I did not know her. That was over 20 years ago. What would Paulette Peaks be today if she was alive? Would she be a police chief, an astronaut, a city council member, a doctor, a lawyer, maybe even the president of the United States, an Olympian? We'll never know because her life was cut down like so many children in this city. This is my cause. This is what I am doing by going into Cook County Jail, asking men, showing these pictures, showing them tapes, showing them news clips of the damage that is done. This is the young man that killed Hadith Pendleton. He didn't mean to do it. He was shooting at somebody else. I spoke to a hundred of the most violent individuals in that county jail in the maximum security prison. Each one of those individuals took the pledge to not kill innocent children women or men when they are released. Each one of those men have become an ambassador of hope, an ambassador of change. Some of those very men will call some of their friends. 
and talk to them about what they heard and about their pledge and encourage them to stop. Many of those people will talk about it in the jail. This is how you begin to do this by coming face to face with the problem. I'm working directly with Chicago Peace Org. And as I said, we're not asking for anything to do this work, but we need help. There's 6,000 people who are locked up in the county jail. I've spoken to 100. I have 5,900 more men to speak to. I've got a criminal justice system that ha in this state that has, houses men in over 50 prisons in this state. I want to talk to them all. I want to give them all an opportunity to sign a pledge to not do these horrible things. I want to go into the juvenile detention center. We're going to need a little help. So I'm asking each and every person who sees this, and I'm specifically talking about people at the corporate level, people who have a business, people who have means. I'm not asking people who are struggling in life. I'm not asking people who live in these various communities who are under siege with this violence to give anything to Chicago Peace Org. As I know, those people need help. That's why we're doing this. But if you live downtown on the Magnificent Mile, if you are a person of means, if you own a company, can you please help us help you keep this city safe? So I'm asking you, please visit Chicago Peace Org. If you have an idea, if you have something on your mind that can help us, if you want to participate in what we're doing, please go to Chicago Peace Org and get in touch with us.